We are back with more What's Now and continuing this show all about health issues and topics. Well, there is a rare disease that affects children called NF1. Families and caregivers are looking for more information, resources, and help. We've got some for you right now. It's an important time to acknowledge families caring for children with a rare disease called neurofibromatosis, type 1 or NF1 for short. But it's not always easy to recognize early symptoms of the disease. Joining us to help explain the symptoms parents should be aware of is Dr. Julia Mead, pediatric oncologist at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, along with caregiver Rainey. Thank you, both of you, for talking with us today. Thanks for having us, Christine. Thank you, Christine. So, Dr. Mead, let's start with you. What is neurofibromatosis type 1 and F1? Yeah, so neurofibromatosis type 1 is a relatively common genetic condition that's caused by a change in the gene called neurofibromin. And a lot of times the way this shows up in young children is that they develop more birthmarks than one would expect. And then over the lifetime, more symptoms develop, such as changes around the eyes or the heart or other changes that can occur in the axillary area, like little freckles in the armpits or in the groin area or they can develop these plexiform neurofibromas. And what are these plexiform neurofibromas? These are a type of tumor that occurs in about 30 to 50% of children who have NF1, and it's an overgrowth of the lining of the nerve sheath. And these can be anywhere in the body. For example, the face, which can be really disfiguring and lead to a lot of teasing or bullying for children, or sometimes they're inside the belly or on the arms and legs causing pain or other problems. And Dr. Mead, what are the symptoms to look for with NF1 and PN? Yeah, thanks for that question, Christine. And that's why we're here with AstraZeneca to raise awareness because it's not always obvious what these symptoms are. And so I would say the first thing most parents or pediatricians will notice is that there are too many birthmarks than you were expecting. Sometimes there's also these soft little tumors called neurofibromas that occur underneath the skin. Or sometimes, like in Rainey's case, the plexiform neurofibroma is the first sign that a child may have NF1. And Rainey, can you explain the NF1PN symptoms that you first noticed in your child? Sure. Our son was at a family vacation when he was about five years old, and we noticed that his neck was swollen on one side. When we got back from the vacation, we went for his annual checkup with his pediatrician who prescribed an antibiotic, thinking he had a typical childhood infection that was causing his lymph node to be swollen. And when that antibiotic did not work, we were sent to a pediatric surgeon for a biopsy. And unfortunately, that biopsy did result in his neurofibromatosis type 1 diagnosis because it, they found a plexiform tumor in his neck. Um, the tumor continued to grow quite large for several years. It affected his airway. His carotid arteries were um, in, intertwined with that tumor. So it was a really critical situation for him um, for some time. Um, and we were not sure what his future would hold. It sounds absolutely terrifying as a parent and also really difficult for the child as it must have impacted his daily life. Yes, it was very challenging. I mean, these are not the kind of things that you can say, look at the birdie and, and, and kind of fib with your child. So we really had to develop a real honest, loving and trustworthy plan with our son as he had many, many medical appointments that followed. The good news is he's now 15 years old. And a lot of those clinical concerns did not come to pass because we were able to very quickly connect with a really strong medical team. His team includes an ENT, an oncologist, a neurosurgeon, and a geneticist. And all of them work in a coordinated care to establish the best treatment plan for him. So now he's a thriving 15-year-old boy who just started high school even in the midst of COVID. He is still with us. And really, there are no words for that in terms of the hope and the reward that's given us as a family. And as challenging as it must be, what are the most rewarding aspects of dealing with this? I think some of the most rewarding aspects of dealing with this is some of the loneliness that we felt initially in that diagnosis are not in place anymore. We've been able to connect with a really strong medical team. And we've also been able to connect with a lot of other NF families that are affected in our area as we raise awareness and advocacy and support newly diagnosed families, which is why I'm here today to try to, you know, encourage people to seek that medical care so that they can have the hope that we found too and not feel as alone as we did in those early years. 
And Dr. Mead, that early diagnosis of NF1 and PNs is essential, as well as a treatment plan. Absolutely, especially now with COVID happening and it being sometimes difficult to connect with your medical team, we really want families to forge that bond with their care team and so that they know that if the plexiform neurofibroma changes quickly or there are new issues, that they can reach out either through telemedicine or a regular appointment. And for families who are wondering um, what's the best way to do this or need more information, I recommend the website nf one and pninfo.com. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Julia Mead and Rainey, for joining us today to give us this important information about this rare disease and also giving us some hope. Thanks so much and stay safe. Thank you so much for your time today.